Hello travelers, this is going to be your card of the week. One day late, but here it is. Um, it's so hot outside today. It's it's going to be 98. That's a, that's a regular temperature, but we're looking at heat indices of 109. It's like that all the way through to October. It's just crazy. So anyway, um, your card of the week is the Nine of Swords. You guys can see that? Okay, let me turn the, uh, the camera around so that I can give you a bit of information about this card. This is a pip card. Let me lower the light a little bit. It's a pip card. And pip cards represent all of the different suits. Uh, the cups, the swords, the wands, the pentacles. Okay, they are basically the portion of the tarot deck that relate to a regular playing card deck. Okay, this card, uh, it is a nine. And I think what, it, it, if I could encapsulate it in a nutshell, the card is a mental assault under the cover of darkness. Okay, um, it is related to the time frame of the eighth through the 14th of November. And it represents the energy of Mars in Gemini. Okay? Now, being the fact that it is Mars and Gemini, there's also a connection to the lovers in this card. And I'll explain that in a moment. Um, if we think about Mars, he's the god of war, right? So this is about um, that uh, Mars will use any tactic in the book to win, right? He's a god of war. So this can be uh, intellectual abuse, uh, mental abuse. It could be verbal abuse. It could be uh, cruel words. It could be um, people planting seeds of doubt in your mind. Um, the swords represent the realm of, the, of, of intellect. Thoughts, perceptions, beliefs, ideas, communication. The tricky side there with, with Mercury, uh, having that um, energy of Gemini, that's the tricky side of Mercury. Mercury can play tricks on your mind. He can. Um, <laughs> he, that's why he's known as the trickster. A um, few of the key words for this card are failure, miscarriage, disappointment, death, anxiety, grief, suffering, misery, fear of loss, deceit, distrust, and despair. Reverse, it's pretty much the same thing, all right? Being that it is a nine, it is associated with the idea of wisdom, solitude, completion of service, attainment, accumulation, and experience. It is the number, the last stage that you reach before you move to the 10. All 10 cards are related to uh the, what do you call it? The wheel of fortune. It is a 10, that changing energy. Um, if you look closely at this card, there's some few features that I like to point out to you. We see the figure sitting up in bed. Now, this is supposed to be a woman, but you can't really tell. Um, but this can be anybody really, male or female. The hair is white from worry, maybe from grief. We don't know. Uh, head in the hands. This is the idea of um, maybe not wanting to see what's in front of you or not wanting to see the images in your mind, right? Sitting up in, in the middle of the night in bed. On the bed, there's a carving here, uh, two figures in battle. The standing figure has a sword and it is attacking the fallen figure here on the ground. So there's this sense of helplessness or maybe even defeat. On the, the blanket, there are roses, which represent desire, but also in the blue squares, if you've never looked closely, you'll find uh, astrological symbols. You'll find the symbol for the sun, for the moon, for uh, Taurus, for Virgo, for Pisces. So there are all of these astrological symbols here on the actual <clears throat> blanket. What I find to be most interesting about this card is the arrangement of the swords. And if you look at them, they look almost like a ladder. So this is the idea of climbing out of your mind, climbing up and climbing out of your mind, right? 
or sinking down by climbing down okay so you can go up and come out of this or you can sink further down into despair um, this card is about inner feelings of guilt sorrow and confusion but the main purpose of this card is that it, it asks you to take the time for some inner reflection so that you can overcome whatever your debilitating emotions are right there's an old saying there's a thin line between love and hate the reason why they say that is because it is those that are closest to us who can wound us the deepest right ex-lovers close friends family members <laughs> right but there's also this idea of um, sometimes speaking without thinking that's another thing of Mars and Gemini uh, it, it's speaking without thinking um, I know sometimes even today people will ask me because I have dreads how do you wash your hair well it's hair I wash it just like you wash yours with water and shampoo so this can be the idea of speaking without thinking right they don't mean anything by it but it's a rather insulting question so do I choose to get angry and upset? No, I just answer the question and explain to them. It's hair, all right? Uh, swords are the realm or the suit of the mind. And this card, what it says in a nutshell is that there is a balance between the heart and the intellect. Sometimes we do say things or we do things that upset or wound people. And if you have a conscience, this can bother you, right? Vice versa, on the other side, somebody has said something to hurt or wound you, this upsets you. It keeps you up at night. So this is about actually having a conscience of knowing something's not right, your heart is heavy, you cannot sleep, uh, you think about it, you turn it over and over and over in your mind. This is a very difficult energy to come out of. I once went through a relationship breakup, and I think I must have been in the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Swords for probably seven or eight months right but eventually I came to a place where I was like I don't know why I'm feeling this way this is what happened this is the way it is and it is about acceptance all right there are some things we cannot change um, the only thing that you you are not responsible for anybody else's feelings nor are they responsible for yours it is up to you to maintain your own mental and emotional health if that makes any sense right so this is about sometimes the energy of choosing which battle of the mind that you want to fight um, sometimes you literally have to let things roll off of you like water off the back a, a duck's back right and then sometimes there are things that are so difficult uh, particularly if you've lost someone uh, you know if you something really really painful it's a very very difficult energy to come out of but again the card is asking you to reflect upon that so that you can overcome it uh, lots of times in life there are situations which we cannot change right uh, what is that thing except the except the things you cannot change <laughs> you know what I mean and acceptance can be a hard thing um, let me see, there was something else I wanted to tell you about this card. Um, let's see. The tricky side of, of Mercury. This card, hold on, I don't think I wrote it down. It typically, in terms of a time frame or an astrological time frame instead of a linear the linear time frame would be the 8th through the 14th of November the astrological time frame would be between June 1st and the 10th when the Sun is between 10 and 20 degrees of Gemini now that whole idea of being associated with the lovers card the lovers card is itself a card of head or heart heart or intellect and being able to find that particular balance it is about choice and so this card too is about choice it is about you can either choose to be unhappy or worried or anxious or fearful or you can take time to reflect on 
those emotions to get to a point to, to get a handle on them to see if they are warranted. All right? It doesn't do any good sometimes to worry about things, particularly if you can't change them. You know, why do you have anxiety? What is the cause of that? Um, grief is a natural expression. It is something and everyone grieves in different ways, right? So this could be the idea, why am I not, why do I not feel this way while I'm, while I'm grieving? Or someone says to you, well, I don't understand why you're not this way. Or, you know, she ain't grieving right. Nobody can tell you that. That is your experience. That's, you know, one of the other words about this. This is about the experience of it. Um, and so only you can control your own thoughts. Nobody else can control those for you. And because of that Martian energy there, that idea of people planting seeds of doubt in your mind, they're saying things, they're doing things, they're, they're behaving one way but saying another thing, and they're planting these seeds of doubt, it puts you in this state. But you have to gain control over that, right? They can't, you know, they're trying to do, they're trying to control you in one way, but only you get to control your own mind. So that's what I have for you today. Um, this is an interesting card. Uh, the Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, and Ten of Swords all represent that Mars and Gemini energy. And this is really about the way that you think, the way that you're processing uh, information, how you're, um, uh, you're, the, you're, you're allowing your mind to take over. Now, if you have like a serious panic disorder or anxiety condition, you know, that's a different story. Um, cause sometimes things are, you know, chemical, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. So, you know, the best thing to do is follow the advice of your, uh, medical professional in that sense. And also it helps to talk to people, right? You can talk to people. Trust me, there's not anything under the sun that we haven't experienced before as humans. There's nothing new under the sun. There really isn't, <laughs> you know, um, everybody in the world has had a lover and then they broke up, right? Um, or have lost someone close to us in an unexpected manner. Uh, that is a universal kind of a thing. And so it always helps to talk to people if you are going through this dark night of the soul kind of a thing, right? And so that's what I have for you. I hope you found this information helpful. And until next time, be well, stay safe, and namaste.